An entitled Karen goes berserk and threatens to report me if I don't do free slave labor exactly how she wants it done, exactly when she wants it done. To give some backstory, I am a 19-year-old in community college living in a small neighborhood in my parents' old small house. I mow my lawn, which is reasonably small because there is no HOA and I can't hire anyone to do it for me. Also, the sun and exercise is great. Three of my neighbors are either elderly, don't have the time, or don't own mowers of their own, so I mow their reasonably small lawns for free at the same time I mow mine. I live in a very close neighborhood, so while I may do mowing, another neighbor may power wash driveways or some such. Let's just say I mow out of the goodness of my heart and get compensated with a bottle of cold water afterward by two out of the three. The third, however, is where the malicious compliance begins. The third neighbor is a very stubborn 40-something-year-old lady who who, number one, owns her own mower, number two, can afford to hire someone to do it for her, and number three, is very specific about how and when her lawn gets done, even though it's free. Reason three pisses me off the most. Honestly, because she does not let me use my mower or fix hers. Seriously, it's like she's punishing me for volunteering to help her, and this mower is a piece of junk. The blades are dull, yet she doesn't let me sharpen them. It's clog full of grass. She doesn't let me clean it. And yet every time I ask if I can tidy up, she snaps, Quit wasting time and just get the job done now! She is mean, entitled, and doesn't care that I do four lawns in one day. Even on days where I can't mow the lawn because I'm feeling under the weather or I'm just too busy with school, she threatens to call the, quote, HOA, again, we don't have one, to report me for running a business without a license unless I get the lawn mode. I'm pretty sure of the three things, you don't need a license to mow a lawn. It's not a business since I don't ask for money or compensation and that she doesn't have the number for the homeowners association that doesn't exist. Honestly, I should have stopped volunteering to mow her lawn a long time ago, but I just never had the heart, except for last week. It's rainy, it's July, it's very hot, and on the morning I was scheduled to mow, it poured like crazy. Now, those of you who mow lawns know, you can't or rather shouldn't mow your lawn directly after it rains for various reasons. And my neighborhood is pretty shaded up, so it takes at least a day to dry up. So around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm just relaxing and enjoying the free time when out of nowhere, there is a frantic smashing of a fist on my door. I would call it pounding, but it honestly wasn't. Lo and behold, it's stubborn lady looking annoyed as ever. As soon as I crack my door, the yelling starts and I'm almost blasted back as she tries to push my door open. I couldn't make out most of what she was saying, but I did hear the words lazy, brat, millennial thrown in there. I'm pretty laid back and used to dealing with angry adults, so this doesn't irk me all that much, but when she pushed the door open, that started to piss me off. Why isn't my lawn mode? I need it mode right now! Uh, ma'am, it rained pretty heavily today, and I can't... M- I don't give a care what the weather is like! You better get your butt out there! I have company coming over! Ma'am, I am not going to do your lawn. I didn't even mow my own lawn today. Please, stop harassing me. And now, the stubborn lady with her teeth clenched and her neck veins popping said, If you don't mow the lawn right now, so help me God, I will report you like I should have done a long time ago. Now, while I could have argued, which I don't like to do, I had thought of a better plan. I said, All right, ma'am. May I at least use my mower? No damn way, you snot-nosed kid. I want my lawn exactly the way I like it. My plan was in action. So grabbing her lawn mower and seeing that her and her company's freshly rained on fancy cars were right along the edge of the lawn, I started to mow. I only got about halfway through before the mower completely shut down due to clogging and the sheer dullness of the blade. But it all worked out. Later that day, after a nice shower and a meal, I heard the reaction to my compliance, which was, to my amusement, the insane screaming and ranting about why the lawn was only half done and every car was caked in mud and grass. I only got in trouble with her as none of my neighbors liked her very much, and of course, she threatened again to report me to the non-existent HOA, to which I said, go ahead. And then, once and for all, I told her 
that I refuse to mow her lawn ever again. This lady, this Karen, really thought that this guy, the OP, was just going to be waiting for her beck and call to do free labor for her whenever she wanted, however she wanted, at all times. It makes me wonder what experiences have happened in this lady's life where she thinks that that is normal. Has that happened in the past before? Had she lived somewhere previously where there was somebody that was just doing totally free labor for her for this extended amount of time that she could bark at and demand to go do what she wanted them to do whenever she wanted them to do it? I mean, why else would she think that this is normal unless she had some sort of referential experience in the past where that was normal? And if that's the case, what was that situation? What was that entire arrangement? The only thing I could possibly think is maybe when she was a kid, she had rich parents and that's how she treated people that worked for her parents. But wow, this is malicious compliance in full effect. Let me know if you guys think jerk or not a jerk and what would you do if you were in this situation down below. Two male Karens try to humiliate me, their waiter, in front of a group of 40 people. So I respond by serving them a sweet, sweet dish of malicious compliance. I used to wait tables at an upscale restaurant that was known to be the place to have your holiday or office parties. Great money if you got the right group. The menus were preset, the wine and liquor was preset, and it was all auto-graded at 18%. All of it was in the contract the host signed pre-event. Usually the host would make themselves known fairly early on so you would know who to talk to if there was an issue and who to give the check to at the end of the night. One night, I am splitting a party of 30 to 40 people with another server. This event had top tier food and mid-level wine and booze. Very nice. A small group of people between five and six arrive a bit ahead of the schedule. Two guys and three or four women. Not a problem since it's actually nicer if they slowly roll in so we can get drinks started. I walk over, introduce myself and the other waiter and ask for drinks. Now, this was back in the early 2000s and chads weren't a thing yet, but the two guys were the chattiest chads. If they could have popped their collars in their suits, I'm sure these guys would have found a way. Super Chad number one said, Hey, me and my bro, we're gonna start with a round of Johnny Walker Blue, and these ladies are gonna have an expensive red wine. Super Chad number two, turning to the girl, said, Once you have Johnny Blue, you just can't drink anything else. It changes you, bro. I said, If you like, I can put those on a separate tab. The event contract has has Johnny Walker black, but not blue. The red wine selection for tonight is a less expensive wine. Super Chad 1 said, This is our party. Just give me what I ordered and don't question me again. Super Chad 2 said, Who do you think you are? You're just some waiter. We have MBAs. Just get us our drinks, kid. I walk over to the other waiter and tell him we are in for a hell of a night, but the check should be nice. For those that don't know, Johnny Walker Blue is three to four times the cost of Johnny Walker Black. So one round of drinks for these people is over $100. The whole night goes exactly as we thought. Nothing was good enough. The appetizers were crap. The food was horrible. Not enough bread. Too many bread plates. The drinks were taking too long. Why do some people have food and not others? It's 40 people, man. It takes a minute to get that much food out. To make it worse, the Chads and company are all over the place, moving seats and making others move so they can talk to who they want. This makes serving hell because we did everything by seat number. Surprisingly, most of the table was normal, not entitled people who knew that waiters are people too. They were impressed by the food and graciously ordered the drinks that were in the contract. One older gentleman gentlemen at the other end of the table from the chads apologize for their behavior by saying they may have fancy degrees and good jobs but you can't teach class i love that guy finally they are winding down and after drinking almost a full bottle of johnny blue along with all the other food and drinks they have a very hefty check and the other waiter and i are excited to get paid we start picking up the dessert plates and asking for last drink requests the nice older guy at the of the table says to bring him the check not wanting any more interaction with the chads than necessary. I bring it to him. I tell him I can take care of it whenever and go about clearing the table. A few minutes later, he calls me over and says, maybe there was a mistake in ringing up the drinks. There's almost $600 of Johnny Blue when in the contract that I signed, it only included Johnny Black. And there are some single glasses of wine that are different from what we agreed upon. Me, no mistake, sir. 
that is what was ordered and drank. He is being awesome and I felt bad. He then said, why did you give the drinks to them when we clearly had a contract? Me. I apologize, sir. They told me this was their party and since I was just a waiter to shut up and do as I was told. So I did. I'm sorry. I took them at their word. I point them out and he calls them over. What follows was the singularly greatest chew out I have ever been witness to. He goes on about how he was doing something nice, but apparently that wasn't enough about how horrible their behavior was that night and how he is ashamed for them. But my favorite line was how you see a person's true colors and how they treat people that work for them and they had shown theirs. Then he called me back over and said, Apparently, this was my party. Guess I was wrong. This is their party, and now they will be taking care of the check. Oh, and up the gratuity to 25%. You earned it. He turns around and walks off, leaving the chads with the check. All in all, it was about $3,000. I have never seen two grown men look so defeated. Was I the jerk? So where do these two guys think that the money was going to come from to buy these drinks? Did they just assume that the guy would be totally fine with it? Or were they not as familiar with this different type of drink as they thought they were with the price increase that would come with getting the more fancy version over the regular one? The OP said it was three to four times the cost of the one that was on the contract. And it's pretty unbelievable how often you see people treating waiters poorly or anyone in service for no reason. It's just because they can. They think they can get away with it and they act totally terrible like this and demeaning when it's not even in response to the waiter being rude to them or anything. It's just right out the gate. But it is cool that the old man did increase the gratuity up to 25% because 25% of $3,000 is $750. I assume that's for the total meal and not just one half because there were two waiters here. But either way, whether it's $750 or half of that when they split it up into two, that's a good chunk of money for one single meal. So anyway, let me know what you would do if you were the waiter in this situation and jerk or not a jerk and why? Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend that he can't date younger girls and then get upset about my budget apartment? So I recently got together with a guy from my hobby. He asked me out first and I had some doubts that we'd work together as a couple because of the age difference. He's 35 years old and I'm 22 years old. So in my apartment, since it's an old house that was originally a single family house, there isn't much soundproofing and the doors creak when people move. I've gotten used to the sound of the guy upstairs getting up at 4 a.m. since he starts work at 5 and the sound of the girl's apartment to either side of me watching telenovas till midnight taking work calls all day and having friends over on weekend nights. I know when I play music or have friends over some of the sound leaks through the walls so I never get upset about hearing my neighbors because it goes both ways. So when my boyfriend started coming over more often he had complaints about the neighbors which put me in an awkward place. He wanted to go speak to them or have me text them and I I said no. For example, one of the early times he stayed over, we went to bed around 10. He wanted me to ask my neighbor to turn down her TV. I said she didn't have it that loud and she turns it off at midnight anyway. At 4 a.m., he got very irritated with my neighbor upstairs getting up and cooking breakfast. I said he would be done by 5 a.m. because that's when his shift starts. At 7 a.m., he was still trying to sleep in and the neighbor on the other side had some work calls that he said he couldn't sleep through. I offered him earplugs and he said he couldn't sleep with them in either. He wanted me to ask her to quiet down. He had similar comments every time he heard someone else in the building just living their life, especially if he was in bed. I got frustrated with my boyfriend and said, you know, you can't expect to date a hot 22-year-old like me and not want to deal with a 22-year-old's living situation. I don't know if you realize, but this is a normal apartment for someone my age. Hell, my neighbors are pretty great. Nobody's throwing loud parties on work nights, nobody's having screaming fights, and nobody's having babies. The hot young part was in sarcastic air quotes because those were his words, not mine. He got irritated and asked why I was bringing age into it, and I said it's because he can't both want someone so young and also want someone with house kind of money. And he was being so out of touch with how normal people live in their 20s. He got really irritated with me bringing age into it and even more annoyed when I'd respond to his neighbor complaints in the future with, okay, boomer, or tell him that if you wanted me to have a rich person apartment, then he could pay for it. So am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend that he can't date younger girls and then get upset about my budget apartment? There's actually an update because a lot of people said, well, why don't you just stay at his house? 
house. It's not possible for me to get to his house on my own because I don't have a car and the buses don't go that far into the suburbs. So that would mean him driving 30 minutes from his house in the suburbs to pick me up and an extra 30 minutes to drive me to his house, then an hour round trip early in the morning to get me home in time for work. It's a lot easier for him to visit me in the city. So this whole situation just seems so strange with the way he's acting, making it seem like it's totally crazy to live in a situation with no soundproofing. I mean, I feel like most people listening to this video right now probably have lived in a situation where they have to hear somebody through the walls. I know I have. I think that's a pretty common thing to have to live with if you've ever lived in a regular apartment complex in general. One of the first things I thought about this story was it sounds like one of those guys that is living a completely separate life. I heard this story about a guy who told his girlfriend that he was in the CIA and she believed it for years and years and he couldn't tell her where he was or anything. And it turned out he just had an actual wife and a family that he was going to when he was going to work at his CIA job. But it turns out in this case, for this story, that might actually be true because the final update to this whole thing says, I googled his property records for his house and he co-owns it with a woman who shares his last name. Holy smokes. I don't know if she's his wife or his ex-wife or something, but I'm out of here. I'm honestly freaking out right now. Maybe it's his wife, maybe it's his ex-wife, or it even could be his sister, for example, but him being married and acting like this in the situation where he can't go to her house for some reason would make a lot of sense. So let me know what you would do if you're in this situation and jerk or not a jerk and why.